Hey everybody, welcome back to the Cryptopolitan. I'm Satoshi Sean, glad you're here. If it's your first time here, please hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications. We get out videos every day on all cryptocurrency and blockchain news, um, sometimes twice a day. Uh, and on the weekends, we give you a, a weekend report. Also, crush that like button, it really helps us out. Let's jump into it today, Wednesday, the 29th of May. And head over to the Cryptopolitan. Um, first story I want to go over is the German Boffin. Um, it's kind of like their SEC or their, uh, their regulatory agency, the Federal Financial Supervisory Authority that they have. Um, they issued a warning against a coin exchange, um, Coin Binet Bean, whatever you want to call it, whatever you do call it. Uh, coin Binet Bean. Um, I don't trust them because of what they have done in the past, but um, they're saying the uh, the Boffin is saying that they're not a regular, not a registered exchange. They refuse to register um, with them with the uh, the Boffin. Uh, it's so it's not licensed or uh, to trade digital assets, um, which is what is required by Germany's Banking Act. Um, there's a watchdog agency that claimed that uh, Coinbinabine has been employing freelance digital traders. So it's just, you know, there's a lot of fake volume, fake trading um, to trade digital assets. Whereas according to the Banking Act of Germany, trading digital assets requires proper approval of designated authority organizations, which they fall under the umbrella of financial instruments. And like I said, they have not registered. Um, the reason why I don't trust uh, Coinbase Bean, they uh, were caught in a cover-up of an alleged hack, which it was a hack. Um, and it re refuted claims of outward transactions of funds and claims that they were, it's all due to scheduled maintenance. Um, data experts from Elitmus, El, Elem, Elem, Elementus, Elementus, sounds like a Harry Potter spell, claimed that those outward transactions had been consistent with a hack. Um, a study of San Francisco-based Bitwise Asset Management recently made claims regarding cryptocurrency exchanges in toto and stated that unregulated exchanges like Coinbase Bean um, expand the trading volume as compared to regulated exchanges like Coinbase uh, and so on. Uh, the study found that it was at 90, dang, nine, almost 95% of all reported trading is actually uh artificially generated so just something to think about with all non-regulated exchanges but i i wouldn't use coin coin Benabine after the uh the stuff with that hack uh, a couple weeks ago malari is a country that is coming out with a full-on stance against cryptocurrency according to the latest report southeastern african country malawi um, has announced that the Reserve Bank of Malawi, the RBM, will not accept any digital currency as it is not recognized as legal tender. Furthermore, warning, uh, they issued a warning related to cryptocurrencies. It was also issued by the governor, uh, assessing on risks, exchange hacks, scandals, Ponzi schemes, and crypto scams associated with investments in the much-typed digital currency. Very hard stance against cryptocurrency, and then they come out and say, well... Blockchain, not not Bitcoin. Blockchain, not cryptocurrency. So they are saying that, that that they you know that blockchain has value. Like many other nations, Malawi is reluctant to introduce a new form of currency into their system. Why? It would destroy what little control they have on their finances and on their money, um, the government anyway. But with time, mainstream adoption of digital currency, Sarah might be different, and they are actually looking at blockchain. Um. I know I've talked about Facebook coin. Uh, this is a new story on it, but I really think it's going to be, I don't know, something so bad or so good. But um, I know that Facebook is terrible. Facebook is evil. Um, they've got their hands in governments. They've got their fingers in so many pies. They have no loyalty to anyone. Uh, and they are coming out with their beta launch in India. And as soon as they started to do that, all of a sudden the government stance in India and the banking stance kind of changed. Um, this is, is talking about how more giant corporations are coming on board with cryptocurrency. 
Uh, India has been selected to launch this project as they're over 191 million Indians who are young and do not own a bank account. And there are numerous people using social media. So what this is talking about, and what I knew was coming, is that Facebook coin is going to be huge. Um, especially like in India, where you've got hundreds of millions that are unbanked, and all of a sudden they have access to financial services in some way. Um, Facebook could literally, before anything is done in the United States, before the United States, the SEC pulls its thumb out of its butt and does something with regulation, Facebook could become the largest banking uh, juggernaut in the world with Facebook coin. Just instituting in all these other countries, totally giving access to people who are unbanked, um, and getting massive control completely unregulated because they're not really a bank. Um, you know, they're jumping through the loophole that cryptocurrency set up that we were all so proud of. Um, they're kind of seizing on it uh, like a pit bull and just uh, just going to town. Um, Pomp Pompliano recently posted that Twitter uh, on Twitter that a Facebook stablecoin project would be the would be a success. It would be the most widely used crypto, which is true. Uh, like I said, people that I know that I've talked to about crypto that have told me that's a Ponzi scheme and you're a scam and blah, 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 and giving me so much crap. Those people are going to be using Facebook coin. Those people are going to be using cryptocurrency. It will be the biggest, most widely used crypto in the world quickly. Um, Novogratz is saying it's a big deal, of course. Uh, and it's going to allow, it's a good thing because it'll allow people to see cryptocurrency, which I've feel it will uh anyone that's in the crypto sphere knows that once you get into it and you start learning everything changes you know it's like taking the the red pill uh you know you you your eyes are open to what's going on and what possibilities are but there's also another side to that coin you know no pun intended um there are a few skeptics calling this plan the ripple killer but uh, Brad Garlinghouse, Ripple CEO, affirmed that the Le Le Inter Interledger Protocol, or ILP, would only strengthen Ripple and stablecoins would give access to people to explore more about crypt the crypto industry. Not really a ringing endorsement for it, but um, and it goes on to talk a bit more about Ripple. But I think uh, I think I think if this takes off, that Facebook will will really take over the banking industry. Um, that's one thing that the United States, I did a story on, uh, if you look back a couple of days or a week or so ago, the U S is looking at it as a banking entity with the Facebook coin and that they would need to regulate because they're going to want so much information and more KYC information that they should be treated like a banking entity. So it's going to change a lot of things. They, they would have, to, I, I think they would have to have a whole new branch. Like you couldn't have the Facebook, you know, uh, just the Facebook corporation, you'd have to have a banking division that's completely set off. That would have to have way higher security. Um, just my opinion, though. Now, this uh, blockchain platform, TradeLens, is to be uh, deployed by the leading shipping companies. Um, this is kind of an interesting story, for me especially. Um, the latest reports claim that the world's major ocean shippers uh, Mediterranean Shipping Company, MSC, and the CMA CGM have joined TradeLens, a blockchain platform established by uh, Maersk and IBM. IBM is in a lot of uh, news today. Um, and they're, seem to be, they're in a lot of blockchain. Um, the shipping companies are the world's second and fourth largest shipping firms, respectively. Um now the ship, the shipping and fishing and all that is just massive, massive, just global web of so many, uh, so many. The, the fleets are huge, and the amount of information that they need to process are huge, and they're not really interconnected. They're very, very centralized with their own companies. So blockchains are really good use for this. Which I've done a story on this or a video um, about it in uh, a project called Ocean Chain a year ago. Right before this launched, so it's a, it's a little, timing's a little odd. The report suggests that TradeLens plans to cut back the paperwork and the cost associated with the process 
as both the major shipping companies join the blockchain platform. Almost half of the world's ocean freight data will be accessible on trade lines. That's a ton. Um, and can be tracked by using a distributed ledger technology. Now, it's happened on uh, in August of 2018, along with 100 global organizations. Trade Lens is a blockchain shipping platform that was launched by Maersk and IBM. The platform tends to promote efficient and secure exchange of information in order to develop a better cooperation across worldwide supply chains. And like I said, I did a, a video on this back on my channel, the Satoshi Sean, back in... Uh, in July, June, early June, 2018, um, and went over Ocean Chain and Space Chain. Um, I thought they were interconnected because of Space Chain's uh, satellites. But Ocean Chain, they, they're using, the one use satellite technology to link all these uh, shipping information, and then they were going to make like an ecosystem for anyone that's on a boat. Uh, medical stuff. It was a, it's a, I need to go watch the video again because I haven't researched Ocean Chain in so long. Um, I even hold some Ocean Coins or whatever they're called. Um, anyway, that's over on uh, Sean. So I thought that was interesting that this is moving ahead and I wanted to, I need to do some research to see if they're connected. Uh, South Korean government, I think this is a huge, huge story um, for a lot of reasons. The South Korean government they show concern over a crypto spike and high and they have a high level they had a high level meeting. Basically, the market's starting to blow up. There's FOMO. People are starting to come back in. We all know that's happening. But South Korea is making some kind not only say emergency but very quick moves um, because of it. According to a recent media report, a pan governmental meeting has reportedly been held in South Korea. To institute a tight watch for Korean for the Korean crypto market in the midst of the topical accretion of the basically the the bull run, um, the meeting held today was chaired by No Hyung Ok Hui. That's a lot of freaking names, and is uh, who's currently holding the office for the Minister of Government Policy Coordination. That's a big title. That's not like finance or anything like that. That's a government policy coordination. And he chaired it. Um, the, the participants of the meeting include officers from the Economic and Finance Ministry, the Justice Ministry, and the state's Financial Manager and Financial Services Commission. Now, this is all of the big boys that you would that you would need to create real uh, legislation and regulation. Um and they're all meeting here about, about crypto. The zones of emphasis uh, encompassing strategy to strictly supervise local crypto exchanges and to mediate a proposal to minimize complications for stockholders so that the market stays uh, going up or propelling up. Now, other ideas include vows to take tough actions against fraud spotted by developing a close partnership between law uh, agencies in implementing a system and the FSC. This is the this is the foundation of serious, real regulation. Um, and the fact that it's coming out of South Korea is not that big of a shock. Um, but they seem to be moving really, really quick. Uh, furthermore, the meeting emphasized the requirement of swiftly passing an unresolved review to South Korea's Financial Information Act we should forbid money laundering through cryptocurrency exchanges. It seems like they're really making a move. They're really coming together. It's not like a committee on the financial services or a committee over here, and then they're going to talk about it. They're bringing everyone together and saying, hey, we need to get this taken care of now. You know, when they look at what happened at the end of 2017, Bitcoin skyrocketed, bajillions of people came in. I've noticed I'm doing a lot more stories on scams and people getting screwed. But like I said in my last story, the thing that shocks me and surprises me the most is the amount of people that are being scammed. In the last Brazil, the one in Brazil, like 55,000 people were scammed by a gang about getting into Bitcoin. No matter that they were scammed for like $40 million or any of that stuff, the fact that 55,000 people came were coming into crypto through this one little group, that's amazing. Um, so it definitely shows the FOMO and that things are moving forward quickly. Uh, and I really think, I think this is a big deal that South Korea is going to lead the way. 
on a lot of uh someone 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 said it's going to be like a new space race and i think it is i think now that south korea is starting to do it i think other countries especially in the united states the sec are going to be seen as slow dinosaurs um when it comes to uh to other countries and they're either going to have to get off their butts and get things taken care of stop putting things off stop literally trying to take the longest possible time because they don't understand what's going on they don't know how to regulate it they don't know what it is um and just to jump into it learn about it and get it regulated that's enough preaching on that um and last, we'll go back over to Iran um, and IBM once again. Iran wants to use the IBM Hyperledger for a national blockchain project within the uh, finance uh, industry of the country, which I went over stuff on Iran before. They're, anything that has to do with their finances is very, very centralized. Uh, it's almost like its own world because of the sanctions uh, uh, by the international community, the United States mainly. Um they still they have like a, they have a very I mean a decent financial network, but it's all just for the country. Like they have debit cards and credit cards and all that, but um, I don't know about credit cards, but debit cards and uh, other cards and uh, ATMs. But you can't use it. Like you could have your Mastercard debit card or your Visa debit card for your bank. Definitely won't work in all of their ATMs. It's all on one grid system. Uh, the National Bank of Iran, the CBI. And AirTac are collaborating to design a domestic blockchain project for its investment in monetary zone. Um, I think that's the key word there is domestic. Now, the project is named Borna. Um, personally, the state of Iran is at odd terms with the United States. It's a good, good term. Uh, facing economic sanctions. Borna is an effort to evade punishment imposed by the United States. However, investors believe that Borna can be employed with the premises of the state only and supports no tokens. Because I'm wondering how they're going to get around this. I'm wondering how IBM is going to be able to work with them. But IBM, they do what they want. If you don't know, they kind of ran the Nazi party when it came to, uh, you know, their uh, their technology stuff. Um, you know, the tattoo that all the Jews had in concentration camp, the numbers, that was the IBM punch code. That got tattooed on their arm. Um, and nobody ever talks about that. But IBM was really big with the Nazis. Um, but since they're uh, the Hyperledger, it's an open source. Um, and it's going to be all contained in, in the country and there's no tokens. Maybe that's how they're going to do it. I don't know. But that is another use uh, blockchain and IBM's Hyperledger being used. That's about it for today. If you have any comments, leave them below. Appreciate uh, the interaction. Um, please crush that like button. Remember, hit the subscribe button if you're new and the bell for notifications. You guys take care. It was good seeing you. I'll see you in the next video.